I get asked about Zig all the time. What are my thoughts on Zig? And I finally just took the dive and I'm finding out about Zig. I've been programming it now for quite a few hours, really getting into it, kind of enjoying it. There's a lot of things about Zig that I really like and there's a lot of things about Zig I don't necessarily like. And so I'd kind of like to share my experience uh, with Zig with you and then kind of give, what do I think the future of Zig looks like? I don't know what these hand gestures mean, okay? It's just things I do. I don't know what I'm doing when I talk. All right, so a couple cool things about Zig. First off, it has tagged unions. If you're not familiar with tagged unions, you can check out Rust enums. They're the same thing. There's not really an equivalent of this in TypeScript. You can like force it to happen, but it totally sucks. Uh, the second thing I really like about uh, Zig is that it has this right here. So this bang effectively means this function returns an error and it's actually inferring what type of error it will be returned. I can specify that specifically and say, hey, it returns an error and it's of type my error. You also don't have to do that, which can lead to a lot of conveniences and you can see why later, which is, or not even later, you can see why right now, look at this. So if I call a function that has the, the ability to error, you're gonna see, you're gonna have to use the word try to get the value out and not just have this value error union. And so to me, this is super cool because when you use try, it doesn't throw the error somewhere. All it does is returns it from the function I'm calling. So if this thing errors, instead of just throwing the error, it says, hey, I'm just gonna return it from your current function. So main will just exit with the error from this if we call it with the value of 420. So if I do that, go here, run it, you're gonna see right here, I got an access denied. That's the error we got. All right, pretty cool, right? Like, I like that. I love a language that has errors as values. I think that that is just a requirement for any new languages. I think it's one of the biggest disasters of all time. Throwing errors is horrible. You don't know who catches it. The control flow is super hard. It's really hard to keep state in a good place when you could just end up anywhere. Instead, you know exactly where you're going. You're going one function up if you oopsie daisy. And at some point, you handle the errors where you want to handle errors at. And so it just makes you handle errors in a specific place. I think it just just much better developer ergonomics. Another thing is this right here, this little question mark. This means what I'm returning could be null. And that means it's kind of like a part of the type system. So if I wanna access something that could be null, I have to go if item, and then I get the inner value out, the non-null item. This is called an optional, super fantastic. Love this idea because it really just prevents an entire host of problems. You always have to specify things that could be null as null. And then when you work with them, you always have to unwrap them in this kind of case. And there's kind of like some forced unwrapping you could do. So I could just go like let foo, oh, wrong language here, uh, const foo equals item this. But if, oh, item, ah. Uh, if I were to pass in something that could be null, this would end up in a really bad place, right? It would end up with me exploding. So if I go foo, fi, uh, foo, there we go. Look how beautiful that is. And do that, it's going to probably tell me I'm going to error. There we go. Look at that. Boom. Panicked. You can't. You can't use a question mark on an all item. So pretty cool stuff. I really like that. I really like this experience because I think it's the right experience at a language level. One last thing that's super cool about Zig, I think this is one of the, just the most revolutionary features, which is everyone hates macros. We can all agree macros generally just are hard to work with, even in a good language with macros like Rust. They're still hard to work with. They're hard to create. In a bad language like preprocessor macro type things with C or C++, they're just horrifying. But Zig, it's like the best of all worlds. This is effectively a macro. It's a compile time item. So I'm creating a stack and you pass in the type and it passes you back out the type specified to that generic. So it's kind of like generics. It's kind of like a macro. And how I use it all the way down here is like, hey, I want to create a stack of type int. And there we go. I've just created it. So at compile time, since this thing is only used once, it literally generates the code for an int stack. That's like super cool. It's very, very easy to understand what's happening here if you're vaguely familiar with Zig and the compile time semantics are just wonderful. I can see myself totally loving this feature about Zig. All right, so now onto some things I don't like about Zig or things I've never really liked. Uh, the tooling is kind of just, you know, it's it's just, it's not the best. It's really not the best. They're just starting to get a package manager in the upcoming version, which means there's just a lot of problems with including other people's code still. And, you know, I, I just can't imagine any modern language not having a pa package manager at this point. It's just like a requirement. 
Second, I find that the LSP is kind of trash right now, and I don't know how long it's going to take for it to become something amazing because LSPs are really hard to keep them amazing, especially as the language evolves. Watch this. Here's here's a really simple version. I'm going to take item, and I'm going to just rename it to item 3. Oopsies. Uh, I already have something called item 3. I'm going to call it item 33. It just like, it literally, it's like, I can't do that. If I quit Vim, relaunch it, go down here, go to this likes, go back down here and try again. Let's just rename this one and call it this. It's just like, I, I I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. And sometimes when you do it, uh, I, just, I think it just happened right there. Uh, my LSP just crashed. The, the actual sub-process launch just crashed. And yeah, they'll fix this problem. This problem will go away right away. But this is kind of like a larger issue is that the language itself still has a lot of rough edges around the tools. But more, more than that, where can I even use Zig? What is Zig good for? Well, you know, a lot of the string handling u utilities they're okay. So for me to use it as a, a CLI tool, I don't know if I'm going to use it as a CLI tool. Honestly, like I think I might rather use Rust or TypeScript. I don't know if I want to use Zig there. Uh, where I see a really cool part for it is that legacy C, C++ code bases could be amazing to use Zig. You could upgrade it, start using something better, and you can still kind of really interact and be pretty smooth with the build system. But you're using Zig. You're using something that's just easier to maintain, in my personal opinion and a bit more expressive and just, just nicer overall. Okay, I like it better than C++. Okay, I like it a lot better, come on. But again, this always gets to my same thing, which is what is the purpose? What is the purpose of Zig? I fail to see Zig taking a large stage in the language area. Like I think JavaScript TypeScript has obviously taken one of the biggest stages ever. I think Go clearly has a stage that is good, even though the language is not that convenient. Java obviously has a huge historical stage that it's still standing on, and Rust is kind of developing its own. Now, is there room for Zig? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what space it's going to really take a hold of other than legacy systems. And that's kind of where I struggle is what is it going to be? Now, obviously, I need to use it more. I'm going to keep on going. If you don't know, I'm building an interpreter on Twitch right now with Zig and Rust and TypeScript and kind of comparing the developer experience of it all. And right now, Zig is nicer to work with than Rust, but this is also a really small problem. But in general, Rust is really nice to work with with like CLIs and stuff. So I, I don't know. I don't know. And if there's one more thing I could say about Zig, which is that new users to the language will quickly ramp up. That is a huge positive, which is what is your 0 to 60? In JavaScript, your 0 to 30 is pretty fast. Your 30 to 60 can get all wonky because of all the little sharp edges, the build systems, the integration, the, oh, this is a build one without the man. Like, all the configuration environment stuff just makes it super hard. Go, the 0 to 60 is like a day, right? It is pretty easy to not know anything about Go and become productive in Go right away. Uh, Java, I think the 0 to 1 is pretty difficult. You got to, like, learn Maven and Gradle and, you, I don't know, Gradle these nuts. Nobody knows what's happening. Uh, with Rust... The 0 to 1 is super simple, right? Cargo and knit. The 1 to 60 takes a half of a year, right? It is a very hard language to get going, but once you get going, it's really awesome. And Rust really struggles with this whole concept of, like, if it's a black box problem, a problem you just know the inputs and the outputs, super great. But anything that's really exploratory, it seems to suffer a lot harder as far as speed goes. But Zig. The 0 to 60 is great, right? It takes a couple days and you're doing fantastic. And so I, I do see that being a win there. I do. I really do see Zig having a win there. So we'll see what the future holds. I think the next couple years are really going to determine how big Zig's going to get. Hey, guess what? The name is the Primogen.